So, to CCTV or not to CCTV, it can be a very vexed question, um, which hopefully um, what I say today may assist you to discover. Okay, so CCTV is clearly not a panacea. I love this photo because um, you've got your lovely cameras there and of course someone's graffitied um, up above the cameras um, with a poignant message. So it's not always a panacea. It can be effective in reducing um, particular types of crime in particular locations. Um, it's less effective in preventing offences against the person, particularly in the high alcohol locations. Um, works best as part of a suite of crime prevention measures and when tailored to a local context. So it can improve perceptions of safety. We've had a lot of talk about perceptions of safety today. Um, it can improve those, but on occasion it can actually perversely indicate to people that there is a crime problem in that area and, and perhaps heighten their anxiety. Okay, so first of all, to see if that's your solution, you have to figure out what is the problem. So is it an actual crime problem or is it a perception problem? Um, is it a civility problem? So it may not be technically criminal offences, but it can be behaviour that's affecting um, those perceptions or people's enjoyment of the space. It could be loitering. Um, an alarming number of um, applications have talked about public urination. Um, lots of those kind of issues that may not show up in, in crime stats, but are seriously affecting the way people um, use that space. We heard from the Crime Stats Agency and also from Victoria Police about the kind of information that they can give you to assist you to work out exactly what this problem is. And if you try and figure out what's happening, when's it happening, is it something that's new, is it increasing, um, and who's really involved. It helps also to look at how this problem has been tackled by other people. Um, what have they done? Talk to other councils who may have had a similar situation. Um, they can give you probably the best advice of all. Um, look at the crime prevention literature. The Australian Institute of Criminology has some great stuff. Um, our website also has some great ideas for um, ways that you can address the problem. Okay, so if you're thinking about CCTV, what makes you think it's actually going to work for you in that particular location? So again, you need to gather that evidence and you may have some idea at first that you've got an issue here, but once you decide, yep, we think CCTV might be an answer to that problem, you really need to get quite, um, quite detailed information about what's happening, when it's happening. Um, as Chris mentioned, if the problem's mainly um, at, at night time, lighting might not work. Um, and it could be the same with, with CCTV. Is it in an area that's actually feasible to be um, to be have CCTV put in that location. Looking at why um, why things are happening in that location and again who, who's involved. So wh what does the research say about the effectiveness of CCTV in preventing that type of crime? What are some other things you could consider? And we've um, had some great examples today about things that you could do that don't involve CCTV um, but can also prove really effective. Um, including the urban urban design that we've heard about, lighting, um, having a community safety strategy is always a really great place to start if you don't have one yet, um, to look at um, setting up a um, strategy so that you've got a comprehensive view of how you can address um, crime in your location. Okay, you have to consult very widely if you're thinking about doing CCTV. Some of the people you need to consult with. Um, you'll need a project manager. You'll need a really, really, really good project manager. Um, that's what has has come out from discussions and, and feedback from, from other councils who have um, implemented CCTV. Um, one of them said that it's complex, hard work, stressful, highly resource intensive and unlike anything you've done before. Um, sometimes the person that ends up being the project manager, it's almost by default and they may not have the appropriate skills um, that they need in contract management and technical side of it um, to be able to implement that. So have a really good think about who you're going to have as your project manager. Um, a crime prevention strategist could also help you look at some of those um, strategies. A technical specialist. Um, more on that in just a moment. Um, urban planners, um, people such as co-design may have some ideas about what else you could do. Your asset manager. Um, your asset manager needs to be available to discuss things such as polls and 
all those fun things that councils have. Um, engineers, same thing, that's quite, quite technical, what's involved in it. Um, your business owners are also important to um, consult with. Um, as the last people just mentioned, um, a lot of business owners have their own CCTV or are being encouraged to implement it. So they form an important part of those consultations. Um, obviously important to engage with, with residents as well. There's lots of ways that you can do that and we've heard some of those ways this morning. Um, your public meetings, your questionnaires and mail outs, your council publications, websites, media releases, the temporary pop-up on-site information, things like that. Uh, one that I did see that was fantastic was from Port Phillip. I'm not sure if we have anyone from Port Phillip here today, no? Um, they got their grade six students from a, a local school. They asked them how they saw their public space. They gave them cameras and said, go out and take photos of what you like and what you don't like about the area in which you live. And there were some absolutely fantastic um, responses from that and some ideas for um, special containers on the road to, uh, that people could vomit into if they needed. Um, and some things about the, some of the ladies of the night not dressing appropriately. So there were some really fantastic insights to get that, um, that perspective of, of some younger people who, um, whose views are quite often um, not sought, um, but they are obviously users of, of that space as well. Young people. Um, various community groups, people who um, are invested in, in that area, who um, any intervention may affect them um, adversely. Social researchers, um, always a great great place to start. They can give you information about um, your demographics in your area, um, survey design, things like that. It's a great tool. Um, you would definitely need a governance specialist. CCTV can be covered by sort of eight to ten legislative frameworks and you have um, auditing and compliance requirements that can be quite onerous. So you need to involve them. Uh, we heard you need to involve hipsters, very important. Um, <laughs> And of course, police with their Superman outfits. So police. <sighs> okay. An application for CCTV must include um, the letter of support from the local area commander or it won't be considered. And we've heard a little bit about what that letter um, should contain and there's more information, hopefully you've picked up the sheet from outside that talks about what police can, can do for you. Um, Police generally like CCTV, it, it makes their job easier. It's a valuable tool for intelligence, for investigation, identification, helps them to deploy their resources to the right place at the right time. And I've even heard it can be a tool for, hmm, how to say it, um, encouraging suspects to be more forthright in their account of incidents that happen. So if they know that uh, they've been captured on CCTV, it can encourage a certain degree of honesty that may not have been there before. So Victoria Police will assist with um, things like your memorandum of understanding, your protocols, developing standard operating procedures. Um, but Victoria Police policy says that they are not responsible for the establishment, repair, replacement, maintenance or funding of the CCTV system. They will be involved as local resources and priorities allow. They will not constantly monitor the CCTV. Um, it's fairly common for the CCTV screens to be in a police station. Um, and obviously police have lots of things to do other than stare at TV screens. So it can be, that's a, a passive form of monitoring where it's just there and they will look at it um, when they can. Um, active monitoring. Um, some places have had um, have actually paid to have active monitoring, even at just at particular times, say Friday and Saturday nights, if that's where your issue is, um, then it can be professionally monitored um, at those times. Um, or a reactive um, monitoring where police can sort of go back later where there has been an incident and look at the footage from that to um, help them to investigate that. Um, so police have to have the ability to access and download the footage and they will coordinate training of officers in the system. Okay, financial considerations. CCTV can be expensive. Your grant money can't be used for monitoring or for ongoing licensing and maintenance costs. Um, and you need to ask will the benefits from the CCTV outweigh those costs. Equipment considerations. Here we go. Um, 
interference. People have found that this is a big issue um, when you're um, the tra transmitting and making sure that you have a clear line of sight for your cameras. People have found even things like um, a new development going in and a crane tower, a ta tower crane that went up and as its boom turned around it was blocking the signal for the CCTV that was streaming to the police station. Things like that that I'm um, not necessarily thinking about. Well, the particular topography of the area, are you actually going to be able to transmit um, the way that you need to? Um, maintenance is a big one. Vandalism, breakdown, cleaning, um, dust, sea mist, condensation, all sorts of fun things. Hard drives, it can take up to six days to repair a hard drive, a particular type of hard drive that um, when that fails. Some systems commonly cost ten to fifteen thousand dollars a year in maintenance. So the big thing that a lot of people who've implemented CCTV have come back to us and said is that it's really important to include a um, a budget contingency for unexpected maintenance. Poles. We could probably spend half an hour talking about poles, but thankfully we won't. Um, there's various types of poles, whether they're owned by a third party, such as a, an electricity supplier. Um, it can take a very long time to get permission for that. There are certain types of poles that may look wonderful and you think, ah, oh, we'll pop it there, but they may be entirely unsuitable if they're a frangible pole. Um, which is designed to fall over or bend if it gets hit, then you can't put a camera on that. Some poles um, may require an, um, a licensed electrician to conduct any maintenance to get anywhere near that camera um, once it's up there. So lots of things to think about. Some uh, have um, heritage overlays. Um, it can take a long time to, to get through that, so you need to factor that in. Um, power supplies, sometimes if a um, camera is mounted, say, in a, um, in a shop or a premises, um, the power supply might come through there and you can negotiate with the property owner for that. If that shop then becomes vacant and the electricity is cut off, you may end up with a problem. Um, licensing. Um, there's on ongoing costs for licensing. Um, also with um, having it on a third party um, property, so I say a, a shop owner, there was one council who did a lot of underground work to get power and also um, transmission cabling through to that premises where the camera was located. Then there was a dispute over another matter between council and that landowner and the landowner withdrew their um, consent to have the camera there and it cost an extra $5,000 um, to then like, relocate that camera somewhere else. Um, camera types, pan, tilt, zoom may not be necessary, um, but it might be necessary. Um, a manual override of the pan is really good because we've had situations where the camera's on an auto pan and it just keeps going around and an incident might occur and someone's watching it and they can't see it again until it comes around to the next time. And sometimes all they get by that stage is somebody's leg, so it's not always helpful. So you need to think about what exactly you do need in that, in that area. Technical considerations, okay. You might think you understand megabytes, pixels, frames per second, pan, tilt, zoom, infrared, wireless and video loops. Um, but what about IP cameras, latency, luminescence, RAID storage drives, multiplexes, ground loop isolators, video content analysis, compression ratios, vault negative sync, electronic gain, PL mount lenses, automatic iris control, patch cords, mean time between failure ratings, auto tracing, white balance, charge coupled device, wide dynamic range, digital slow shuttering and CMOS images. So it's important to get really good advice on the technical side of things. Okay, so there are Australian standards that, that govern that and that can be really helpful. So there's various ways of transmitting. You can use fibre optic, wireless or internet protocol. Um, you need to think about any lag or latency um, between the event happening and the image actually getting back to where you're viewing it. That can be quite important in, if um, events are unfolding. Um, if the information is going to be used for evidence, there are standards that um, need to apply in order for that to be used by police and in the courts. Um, recording of your data, obviously the higher quality, the bigger the um, storage capacity um, will be. You need to think about how often that data gets overwritten. Proprietary systems, sometimes you'll go and see a special, specialist and they'll say, ah, you need this, 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 this and this. Um, and it's all in this one lovely system. However, if some one part of that breaks down or you wish to upgrade, um, you're limited if that's a proprietary system, you have to use their particular devices. So a non-proprietary system means you can cut and paste as such. Okay, there are quite um, 
a lot of governance considerations, including privacy, the MOU, code of practice, all of those things, which um, there is um, some help to be had um, on those. Auditing compliance is um, a really important one and it will need um, close cooperation with Victoria Police. If it works, you want to know. Um, if it doesn't work, if it's not working, you want to know as well so that you can make some changes, adjustments to that. Um, so establish your baseline data at the outset, as has been said, um, and you need to be able to, um, that needs to be repeatable. Um, so that can include things like your perceptions of safety, community surveys, um, crime data, hotspots, qualitative data, interviews with police and traders, pedestrian counts in a particular area, council maintenance reports and things like that. Um, and asking how people feel about the space and about the CCTV, both before and after. Um, are you meeting your objectives? All of those ways that we can find information to see if it's working. And it's important to figure out how much have you spent? What are the ongoing costs? Are you getting value for money? So you can make adjustments where necessary. And it's also in the interest of transparency, it's really important to share your results, share what's happening with your community. It may mean that there's an article in the paper every now and then when someone gets nabbed um, by the cameras and there's a successful prosecution. That's really helpful to maintain community awareness um, and trust in the, in the system. So I think that's it. Oh, we're, we're here to help. If you have any questions um, about CCTV, there's a lot of stuff on our website. Sounds like CCTV should be the last resort. That may be the conclusion that you come to when you conduct all of that um, initial research. Um, but there can be um, a, strong, a strong push for it, which is why we're saying it's really important to get all that information and work very closely with your local police um, to work out if it is the right solution. And there are situations where it can be the right solution.